Would you say that you're new to painting Lexan or polycarbonate bodies and using PS and TS paints and not sure what to do? If that sounds like you, then stay tuned for today's video because I'm going to paint a simple paint job on this Tamiya Neo Fighter body using three different colors, some simple masking techniques that'll help you get the best results out of your next paint job. Hey guys, thanks again for tuning in to Poor Boys RC. Uh, as I said in the intro there, real quick, we are going to be painting the Neo Fighter body today. <laughs> there it is. We've already skipped a couple of steps, okay? The body has been cut out, obviously, as you can see. If you guys have watched any of my painting videos before, you'll know I'm a big, big believer in really doing a good job washing these bodies before you start. So this has already been washed twice. Uh, and so when you wash it, guys, use really, really nice soapy water, hot soapy water. Uh, I like to use dish soap, and I give these things a really, really good cleaning on the inside, okay? Because there's release agents that are in this plastic or in this polycarbonate, uh, so it can come off the mold that will affect, negatively affect, the way that your paint sticks. So really, really important to make sure you give your bodies a good wash. Now, I've already done that, and these have been dry for some time, so we are able to kind of fast track the video a little bit and get right into the paint scheme. So let's take a gander at that. Now I gotta admit, I'm a bit of a sucker for box art. The Neo Fighter buggy, I mean, the paint on this is really simple, guys. Check that out, just a two-tone, white and blue. Now I'm gonna add an optional third tone. And like I said, I normally go box art, but I wanna go a little bit different on this guy. I'm not gonna go crazy, but what I wanna do is I wanna incorporate a little bit of pink a little bit of PS11, and for those who know, they know. This is a little throwback to the Tamiya frog, and the Neo Fighter buggy has some frog DNA to it, so I want to incorporate just a little bit of that frogginess here, if, if you will. Uh, so what I want to do is just copy this blue line that you see here, but I want to follow this body line. How's that? There we go. I want to follow that body line, curve it off, and then put a little bit of pink in the back. Like, an extra pink kind of stripe and some pink up on the roof as well. And I think just that simple little change is gonna be very impactful, uh, really make it stand out from a box art and really not be that far away from box art at the same time. Tools of the trade. First thing, cold beer, always a cold beer. Our three colors that we're going for, PS11 pink, PS3 light blue and PS1 white, all in Tamiya colors. If you're going to be painting Lexan or polycarbonate bodies, make sure you are using PS paints, okay? These stick to this. If you use a TS or Tango Sierra paint, it looks exactly like this. You won't know the difference other than that P will be a T. If you're using that, it's not going to stick to this, okay? Don't even think about it. I've done it. We've all done it. We've all screwed it up. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Get the right paint. I know it's expensive, but get the right stuff, okay? That's my PS, PSA, <laughs> out of the way, all right? Let's do a little bit of masking, and then we're gonna go outside and start doing some spraying. As you can see on the box art, the windows are completely black, and those are decals, decals. And uh, that's for you, Eric. <laughs> and uh, so I don't have to mask off these windows at all, which is gonna save me a bunch of time. That's pretty freaking easy. So um, yeah, so without further ado, let's start masking the buddy. <laughs> and once again, I got ahead of myself. I wanna talk about masking tape first. Uh, I am going to use a couple different variations of masking tape, okay? This stuff is the Tamiya thin, I think, I believe this is two millimeter, uh, Tamiya two millimeter. This is a vinyl tape guys. And this stuff's really rad. Um, really nice for laying down curved lines, uh, lays down super nice. And as you, as your lines curve, it'll stay nice and flat. So this is a really nice product for, uh, for curved lines or any kind of intricate curved line here. Exact same idea. This is not made by Tamiya. This is more so in the automotive world virtually the exact same product, just a little bit thicker. Okay. Works like a hot damn. From there, these are non-vinyl. These are more like your traditional, like kind of masking tapes. Also by Tamiya and not because I mean to be a total Tamiya, you know, brand whore, but it is what it is. And I like their products. So 
This one's uh, whatever that is, a centimeter or so, and this one's quite a bit wider for covering large areas. So those are the tools that I'm gonna be using today. I'm not making very intricate lines, but I wanna follow that body line right there, that curve, so I might need this guy. The thicker blue guy might, might work. I'm gonna start with him, see how that goes. Let's get rolling. So I've masked it in such a way that the blue, which will be painted, I can then jump to the next color, which will be the pink, which will be back here and just up here a little bit. And now this way, when I'm done, I can spray the blue on both sides and then I can unmask the part that I want pink. I can spray it pink and then I can take that off and spray the rest of the body white and have my whole body back in white. Sounds simple, right? Easy peasy. What could go wrong? <laughs> She's a beaut, clack. She's a beaut. Now I'm going to try to get a good shot of me masking this because it doesn't look like much, but this curve right here, you can see there's another intersecting curve right here. So it, it's kind of a, an interesting little area to mask and this thin tape is really coming in handy. So I'm going to see if I can get you guys in nice and close to see what's going on. tip I'll throw out at you guys when you're using these vinyl tapes um, <clears throat> you want to be careful not to stretch it it's really tempting it's so it wants to work with you watch how much I can stretch that and it's quite elastic it will kind of recoil back so for some reason as you're making your lines you really want to stretch it out don't do that okay let it lay nice and flat reason being if you really stretch it you can imagine it gets thinner and thinner and then it, it'll adhere, but then as time goes by, it starts to kind of recoil back and your, your edges will start to lift. You start getting paint to bleed through. So fight the urge to stretch it, okay? Stretching it is not better. You want to lay it down nice and flat. And I'm pretty happy with that. Now, I, again, I'm no expert, all right? Just an enthusiast with a YouTube channel. So that is good enough for me. Ta-da! All right, so believe it or not, guys, that was the heavy lifting part. That was the tough part. So <clears throat> now we're on to the easier stuff. So I'm gonna take my thick, extra super duper wide masking tape, and I'm just gonna lay down some big thick layers here. This is the easy part of masking. <laughs> Covering large areas. This is where I'm, uh, my talent really shines. So I'm just about done masking, but one thing I wanted to mention, guys, is again, we're going to go blue here on the sides, but pink on the top. And you can see how I masked that pink area off. That's trying, that's it's kind of what I was trying to explain when I was explaining how I masked off the pink area on the sides. It's tougher to illustrate that right now, especially with my very limited video uh, editing knowledge. <laughs> but here's a, a really clear uh, depiction of what I was doing and why. So... Now when it's time to paint the pink, it's already masked. So I'm going to take just a nice big thick piece of paper or a masking tape and I'm just going to quickly cover up that area that's going to be pink. So now when it's time to paint the pink portion, I can unmask the pink portions. I don't have to remask things and really monkey around with it a whole lot. It's already done. This tape I find is not the stickiest thing in the world. So if you're using it, make sure you really get your edges down so you don't get um, overspray blasting through. We're gonna go with super, super, super light coats. Okay, whether it's the blue, the pink, the white, doesn't matter. We're always gonna start off with really light coats, guys, for a couple reasons. One, they dry very quick. Two, and probably the most important reason 
is with light coats, you're not going to get paint bleeding through and getting underneath your masking tape, okay? That's a problem that a lot of newbies make. I used to do it myself all the time. I screwed up a lot of bodies to get here, so let my mistakes help you, all right? But uh, anyway, yeah, we're gonna go light, light coats, okay? That's gonna bridge over this fresh tape that we just laid down. If we were to go really heavy, the, the chemicals that are in this paint are gonna lift the tape. You're gonna get bleed through and make a big mess, okay? So light coats only. Let's get rolling. my first screw up already so remember when i said when masking with that white uh vinyl tape to really make sure you don't stretch it <laughs> too much so you can see that bleed through right there and uh, so what's happened there is that that white tape has lifted and the blue paint has snuck in underneath it which is totally not what we wanted to have happen uh, the other side, look at that, nice and clean, crisp line. This one, little dodgy up front, super dodgy in the back. But do not worry, because uh, Phil's got some answers for you. We're going to get that fixed up. But first things first, we got to make sure that paint is good and dry. If you remember earlier in the video, I said this thick tape, this thicker uh, style tape doesn't have the best adhesion tends to lift be cautious with it So as I sprayed all my paint and it was kind of a little bit chilly outside It started to lift right here. And if you look right inside there So we may have some overspray so we'll have a closer look at that in a minute. Let's start by unmasking our Area that we want to be pink next Which is this guy right here? That's good. This is this tape's not sticking very well, so I'm going to remask that. Hopefully, there's no overspray. There is just a little bit of overspray in there, so I don't know if you guys can see. See how this post right here? See how it's kind of got a little bit of blue to it? Oh yeah. So there's a bit of overspray there. We're going to have to fix that before we hit the white. So this side turned out pretty good. The other side's a bit of a gong show. Um, so really the, the big area with an issue that I've got is right there, guys. And you can see that bleed through. And then a little bit, a little bit of overspray right here. But we're going to fix it. And my goal was to not have to remask the entire body a second time. I thought I was clever enough with my masking. Obviously not. <laughs> so um, it's all good. We'll do it again. We have lots of tape, we have lots of time, and YouTube is free. So. so I let the paint rest overnight, and here's what we're kind of up against here today, guys. I think you can see that right there. That little bit of bleed through I want to fix. There's a little bit of bleed through down, down there, which is kind of hard to see. And... There's a little bit of bleed through right there. So a couple minor things that we're going to fix up before we proceed laying down the pink. So tools of the trade, there's a couple ways you can do this. In this video, I'm going to use a piece of four, or I'm sorry, 600 grit sandpaper. Okay, 600 grit sandpaper. And I've already got it kind of rolled over. I'm just going to cut off a little section. You don't need very much, okay? I've cut this tiny little... Sandal piece. So 
I'm going to take the sandpaper. I'm just going to sand off that little bit of bleed through. Okay. And try and kind of recreate that nice smooth edge with the sandpaper. So let's see if I can capture this on film. <laughs> show you guys exactly what I'm doing. Um, it's really hard <laughs> to get this to film this, um, but I hope you get the gist of what I did. And there you can see that line is considerably better. It's not perfect. It wasn't mask perfect. Um, it's a little bit wibbly wobbly. And I'm just going to do a little more cleanup on this edge. Now, with all that done, you're probably noticing those little scratches where the sandpaper kind of marked that Lexan on the inside. Don't worry about that. That's why we're using a 600 grit sandpaper, guys. It, uh, it's a lot finer. And those sand scratches, the pink paint is gonna fill those scratches. So you're not even gonna be able to see them when we're done. Okay, now last bit of overspray that I found was right here. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see that, but right on this roof, kind of roof rail area, there's a little bit of blue right in there. So another technique you can use to get in some of those hard to read spots is the good old Tamiya polycarbonate body cleaner. This stuff right here and a Q-tip, get a little dunk and I'm just going to get right inside there. And this stuff works really great. And just like that, it's gone. Excellent! Remember before I was saying, make sure that your body is clean, 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 clean. Now it's the next day. I've showered, I put lotion on my hands. I've, you know, I've been out and about, I've been working. So make sure you really give your hands good clean before you start touching inside these bodies again, guys. Again, you want that paint to stick as best as it possibly can. And by having contaminants on your hands can affect the adhesion. Another good tip, since I was playing around in some of these areas, is I'm going to just get some rubbing alcohol and put it on a clean microfiber towel. Make sure it's not like one of these that's full of grease that's been washed. Make sure it's a nice clean one. That one's not perfect either, but it's for this it'll do. Um, make sure it's in good shape because uh, all of the oil and all the remnants, you know, the oily remnants that are in some of these older towels, you're just gonna spread it all over your body. And you don't want that, obviously. So we're just gonna give this a quick little wipe down. Our body is masked up. Our second color is ready to be applied. Let's go give her a heck, see what happens. Remember this line, how it kind of messed up it looked? Cleaned it up pretty good. I'm actually really happy with how that turned out. Time to unmask this. And uh, on to the final color, the third and final color, the white. That's it right there guys it's three good coats you know pretty simple sprayed the whole thing white not a whole lot to explain other than just again your first two coats make sure they're really nice and light your third coat you can start putting on a, a little bit heavier cool 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 some decals on there break it up it's gonna look really nice oh look at that blue 
Oh yeah, and that pink too, look at that. Oh man, it looks so good. Oh, kitties are getting mad. Oh yeah, looks like it's going fast standing still. Overall guys, look at that. I'm really happy with how that turned out. Once applied, the decals are applied on there, it's gonna look really wicked. Gonna unmask the wing really quick here as well. The reveal on it isn't quite as exciting so it's just all one color and that color happens to be white which is a pretty bland color but wow it's so bright you can barely tell. But uh, anyway, there's our wing, there's our body, Neo Fighter buggy. It's gonna look awesome. I'm, I'm stoked. I think it looks great. I'm happy that the little fixes we had to do worked out really good. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put some decals on this thing now and get it ready because I'm going to build this thing this weekend. And like I said before, I really like having my bodies ready ahead of time uh, before a build. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. Turned out great. If you guys have any questions or comments, please throw them down in the comment section down below. Always happy to answer all y'all. And please, if you haven't already, throw a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. It really, really means a ton to a small little content creators. And I'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks again for tuning in. Love y'all. Be excellent to each other.